What's up, KT? Good morning. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing pretty good. I'm just trying to set up my my sound and everything here. All good. No worry. Yeah. Trying to broadcast to multiple things, so. Fine Saturday morning. I'll apologize ahead of time if you guys hear my dog spark. I don't have a, a filter when I'm on my phone, so they're bad. You'll hear them, guys, just just to know. Um, if you scroll down, do you know how to do the voice isolation thing? Go to the very top of your phone and, like, swipe it yeah. Okay. I, I, I've I got it on, but sometimes it'll pick them up if I'm talking at the same time. So I remember, I remember a whale stream. He would, um, his dogs were barking like crazy. And then once, once somebody figured that out, it was like night and day. He was like, he kept being like, my dogs, guys, sorry. And we're like, dude, we can't hear it. Like the iPhone thing. Was <laughs> So this will record automatically on Twitter. Um, let me share. I'm gonna share my um make sure we can can you hear me? I'm gonna leave and come back on Discord because I always have to do that. Do you have the questions in front of you? Yeah, I'm pulling them okay. up right now. Cool. So I'm gonna just uh put that on my screen here on discord but obviously Sounds audience totally good. fine yeah a lot of questions yeah. for amy um how do you find your setups and other things a lot of questions that she answered in her last youtube about risk reward and you know where your stop loss should be and things like that so yeah it's really cool I've been sharing that. That's going to be our number one YouTube. It's like 500 views right now, which for us is a lot. We usually get like 35. So. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm getting the questions pulled up. Yeah, you're good. And then I'll be ready to go. Slido. Yeah, pick one or go for it, man. Thank All right. From here, you guys. I will, as it. soon as I get them pulled up, we will we'll get going here. Um, I will. There's a question. There's a, quite a few that were asked to both of us, and a couple of the first ones of that are: Do you do this full time? Is one that stuck out to me. Like I think it's interesting for people to kind of hear a little short thing of our trading journeys. You know what I mean? So, for people that aren't familiar, yeah. so if you want to start with that one, while I pull the questions up. Yeah. So I taught high school for a long time um in total about 18 years and um during covid i got into trading um i got into trading right before covid i bought spce in december of 2019 and um i watched that go from like 980 um right under 10 bucks to 35 dollars and so that was really cool. And um, then I learned about options because I went on Twitter and I started looking at SPCE. So I made my first options trade right after the COVID shutdowns um, on Blue Apron. And uh, yeah, that it went insane. Like 280 bucks went to like $3,000. And I was like hooked. And uh I started making not only the same that I was making teaching, but more than double. Yeah. Um, I had losses for sure. I had, I had months where I was like, holy shit, I'm glad I'm teaching. I was making about six grand teaching. I think it was like 5,900. And then, it, and then by the end I was making 6,300 uh, net on teaching. My checks would be about 9,000 something, maybe like, Sometimes they would get just over 10, but rare. I remember being like, dude, that's a lot for a teacher. But um, my net was right about 6,000. And then some days I had, I made $6,000 in one morning. So um, I don't do that every day. Um, but uh, 
obviously from the numbers I'm telling you, you know, even doing $800 a day, right? I'm going to exceed my teaching salary. So um, yeah, the biggest things that have been helping me this year is staying on the 15 minute chart. Um, I used to switch between sometimes the three minute if I really wanted to zoom in, but I kind of lived on the five. And my buddy Holly got me onto the 15 minute and he was like, dude, there's no fake outs and this and that. Um, I really love the 15 minute. It's really been helping me see Amy's swings a lot better too and not getting faked out because people will say, oh, I got in her swing, but I'm, I'm you know, I got wicked out because Amy's like, we, we gapped up in the morning, you know, and like, oh, I got out on that dip. So really focusing on number one, the right time frames. Number two, scaling in. Like, that's the dip in which you should be adding, you know? Uh, I'm not saying just add dips for no reason, yeah. but all this stuff I'm talking about are things that I learned along the way and um, took a leave of absence from my, my job, which led to uh, basically going full-time, never going back. So I always said, I'm going to take a leave of absence and see how it goes. The reason I did that is because I got COVID after I went to Dallas for my brother's uh, wedding. Turns out in Texas, a little bit different than California, a lot less masks and whatnot. Um, that's a joke. Nobody was wearing masks by then, but um, got COVID really bad. It was really sucked. But after a couple of days, um, my teaching job, they're like, you have 10 days for COVID anytime you get it. And the nurse was calling me and she's like, are you still testing positive? And I was like, yep, I'm testing positive. And, um, but I felt fine by then. Right. So those two weeks I took, um, $2,000 to 40,000. And I was like, dude, when I'm not, yep. when I, when my attention isn't divided, I, I do really well. And then, um, there was another time I did 3000 to 33,000 and stuff. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of my story. Um, obviously making enough money, uh, trading and, you know, with my son having autism and stuff, it's been a insane blessing to do that. So that's kind of been my journey and, uh, turned into Keanu trades because I was, I was in different servers and learning and on Twitter posting my stuff. And then it just became, you should have your own server, this and that. I don't want to have too many cooks in the kitchen and outshine, not outshine, but you know, cramp somebody else's style. So it's been really cool. And then Amy came on board um, last summer and market outlook, and, you know, price action based trading. And um, she was just like, wow, this is like the server I've been looking for, which is really amazing to hear. And uh, now we're doing this. So yeah, what's up? Awesome. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, I started with crypto, you know, uh, way early on before I even understood anything about crypto because I got a bonus from a book I wrote in Bitcoin. And that was kind of, the rest was kind of history from there. Obviously, like most of us, I've been, I've been trading for years before COVID, but COVID was really the, the place where a lot of eyes got on because the price action, the money flowing into the market, the way it made it so easy to, to really make money in the market. So you know, but, but I like full-time type trading, um, 2018, 2019, and then discord trading. I was in another discord for a couple of years. And then of course I ended up with KT over at Honeycomb, uh, last June or something like that. Um, and in like, and here's the, the truth guys, I, I chose Honeycomb. I had other opportunities, but this is what felt like home. And I'm super grateful to be here. I've had offers from other discords, but the, with Honeycomb, um, the, the teaching and then the accountability with the owner, KT specifically, is something that really drew me into Honeycomb. It was, it was refreshing to have someone in there in the trenches 24 hours a day. Um, literally, I don't know when he sleeps and I, people used to say that about me, but I truly don't know when he sleeps because it's all day, every day. And believe it or not, uh, my previous discord, I was 90% day trading. I know you guys are used to my swing trades, this and that, and a little day trading, 
but it's a flip. Uh, the previous Discord I was in, it was day trading, equities, options, crypto, all of it. And of course, swing trades too, but really being able to take a, take a step back from that as I transitioned out of that Discord um, gave me the time and the ability to deep dive into charts more, which is where really I was able to make that transition into deep diving into swing trading and the risk reward and, and, and fine tuning my strategy because and this is kind of like a little bit of a, a, a lecture piece, but we are, anyone listening right here, anyone in a Discord, anyone trading in this type of way, we're hyper-focused on the market. We're watching a one-minute candle, five-minute candle, 15-minute candles all day long. So our perspective is inflated. A red day is inflated. A green day is inflated. The run we just made, 99.9% .9 of people in the market even, and and then that have money invested in the market aren't staring at charts all day the way we do. So we kind of make it harder on ourselves in that fashion, especially with swing trading, because when it comes to swing trading, and it actually transitions into um, one of the questions here about uh, swing trading in general, where is it? Because uh, I think this is a great question to start with. Let me find it. Um, I, I don't remember where it is. So so anyway, like so really what I'm trying to say with the swing trading is um what KT was saying and bouncing off what KT said about getting wicked out and leaving a trade too early and this and that and confirmation. We are um overly overly uh sensitive to market conditions because we love what we do. If anyone is day trading or trading all day long or watching the charts all day long, we wouldn't do it if we hated it, especially if you're not making money uh, money yet. You're loving what you're doing if you're doing this all day. It's 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 evident. Whether it's ego of being right when you do a trade, whether it's I want to make money to make myself more financially secure, whether it's the math of it, like where it's a puzzle and it's like it's a challenge to to learn and and project what happens next with the charts. We love what we're doing. And something I lecture a lot about and I talk a lot about is being hyper aware in the front of your head, the first consideration always when taking a trade should be, am I taking this trade because I love the trade and I want to trade in this moment, or I'm taking this trade because it's the best setup possible and this is the right entry. Am I trading just to trade right now or am I trading to make money? And that's something I really talk about a lot, especially when you are day traders and day traders in general, that that group mentality, that pack mentality, we get it on X too, in Discord, wherever, of and that's what's great about Honeycomb, a little bit of a shameless plug is, you know, the group mentality day trading is unrivaled. I mean, there's so many people that are very, very well versed on day trading and what it takes to day trade and to kind of bounce those ideas off of each other. You know, it, it's a positive and a negative because it's it's one of those discords where it's not sugarcoated. We're very, very honest and in saying whether it's a good entry or not, or why are you taking that trade or not, or why we're taking a trade or not, those type of things. So, you know, I think that the first thing, the very, very first thing for new traders to really, really start with is that, is understanding if you're someone trying to absorb it all and you're in it all day and this and that, remember your perspective the, of the market is like, you're overly sensitive to it. You're so hyper aware of it. And to remember that, one red day or one green day isn't necessarily, you know, the end of the world type thing. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, all right, let's go through, through some of these questions to KT. Uh, both, for both, please. Just very basic. This is a good first question. How many screens, what platforms, your pre-market prep, useful market resources, or any other tips and tricks? Go for it, KT. Um, I have two giant screens that I got from Costco because they were two hundred and seventy bucks. These they're Samsung wide screens. I freaking love them. Um, but I think if you have two screens, you're good. I used to have two phones because I was more um, mobile, and I would watch one you know the chart and i would execute with the other phone because that was only 20 dollars a month to add another line 
and uh but yeah you definitely it's not about your screens it's about your nook in your corner of the world at which you trade and so you know i think your trading is going to go a lot better um one of our members was traveling and he was like he had a good first day when he was on a work trip um but he couldn't get into a groove with uh Emma did something weird with her. Yeah, that's not her. Yeah, sorry. Look, look at Twitter. That's kind of weird. Oh, sorry, I messed it. I messed it up on Twitter. Um. So yeah, he couldn't get into a groove with uh trading, and I was like, dude, do not, um, trade while you're on your work vacation or whatever. Like one, Karen or Kevin asshole on your job trip or whatever, wherever your job is that you can't be at your trade station. It doesn't have to be on a trip. It could be, you know, across the street in your office, but um, it's going to ruin your trading. And you really need to be in a groove and you really need to be in the right headspace. You know, um, I, I struggled a lot with mental health in when I first started teaching yeah. in 2010, October 2010. Um, if the, the people in the world, there's, there's three people that I can think of in the world that need your mental health support. It's number one, number one, any couple or adult or any person that has lost a child. Um, that's, that's to me, the toughest thing I could think of, um, that somebody could go through. Number two, parents of special needs children. Because they like to post victories only, and they don't post the meltdowns and the crying, yeah. themselves crying, you know. Um, we know social media is all, like, the highlights. Yeah, it's a highlight reel. Um, it's a highlight reel, yeah. Um, so, the third one is first-year teachers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um so yeah, I, I not a, never a big drinker. And I got, I got my first teaching job and I was just like, I need a beer, man. Holy shit. This is like really hard. You don't know what you're doing. It's just like going into options. Everything's it's like, everything's moving a million miles an hour and you have 400 things to do. You just, you just don't know it yet. And it's okay. By the time I was towards the end of my teaching career, I could do it on autopilot while trading. You know, I could do five things at once. So your cognitive skills just aren't there yet. Same reason why we turn the radio down when we parallel park, right? Where it's like, hold on, I don't do this a lot. And not that we don't do it a lot, but it's, it's I need to focus. So, um, so for 20 bucks, you a month, I think it's 20 bucks a month, you um have a second phone. And all it is is your old iPhone, your old phone that you probably have in your drawer, right? So I sit here at my desk. Here's the big thing I do. I sit here at my desk, I watch charts, and I execute it on my phone. I don't I don't execute on my phone and then on my computer and then da da da. Um I just execute it on my phone. I've always done that. Same. And now yeah, yeah. if have yeah. I um have I had issues with my phone and I'm like, all right, let me open up TOS and execute a trade. Yes, I have. Um, you know, maybe use Active Trader or, or Webull like uh the Weeble PC one. But yeah, so you have to be in your element. More screens doesn't matter. My pre-market prep, I used to wake up and scan the market and Twitter and stock twits and all this for an hour. And it would just give me FOMO. And then I would be in, you know, Peloton calls or something. And not <laughs> like I think focus is everything. More screens might dampen your focus yeah. so yeah so um i used to drive with the phone in my hand in case i need to execute a trade because i was commuting and then i had my phone with a pop socket holder up and i would execute just like listening to um you know spaces or the discord voice while driving so it was not probably the safest thing but two phones it really helped me out a lot so um platforms i trade on think think or swim 
Um, I am moving over to Aries though, because the fees are just out of control. You know, AMA posted, I think 6K. Yep. I'm at like 4K. I mean, 4,000, I think I'm at 4,000, something like that for the year. And it's March. And I slowed down my trading a lot. I was like, I'm going to skip days. The biggest incentive for that was the fees. Cause I was, I was doing like 300 bucks a day in fees. It was just stupid. So just so many contracts, you know? Um, market resources. Let me think here. What do we scan with, Amy? I know you're a, you're really good at finding stocks. I like fin finviz uh -huh. finviz for scanning. Yeah, finviz is and then uh, f i n v i z yeah. dot com. I'll make the the yeah. the platforms and the things I mentioned today. I will make a list of. I'm dropping them down as I go, and I'll give you links. But finviz for screeners, okay. trading view for screeners, um, are the top two for me because they're easy to use for for newer traders as well finviz is amazing because and the, the paid finviz is worth it because with, worth it with finviz you get everything from your heat maps to your news to your institutional buys you can set up your screeners you get to see who's buying who's selling everything all in one place you get to look at your floats everything on finviz maybe i'll do a finviz class here soon but for market resources definitely finviz and for options if you're looking to learn options and really understand what options are and options mean options strat is where to go shout out to someone i used to uh in my old discord uh swinging bull introduced me to that about a year and a half ago and i have not looked at long options calculator mm -hmm. since so options strat is definitely one that i 100 percent would say especially if you're looking to learn spreads uh, just playing around with the features on it. And um, Option Strat also has the cheapest flow of most of the flow. Most is like between 100, 120, something like that. Option Strat, it's like 60 bucks a month. So that's another market resource I use. My platforms. 60 bucks a month. Holy yeah, God. it's a lot cheaper than most of the flow. Absolutely. And then as, as okay. far as like the platforms I use, uh, Think or swim. I love the fills. See, I've got a weird system. I love if you're a new trader that's not looking to chart with the platform you're using, the easiest is is obviously Robinhood. It's the cleanest, uh, it's the cleanest, easiest to use, but you can get some bad fills sometimes on Robinhood. Um, for charting, Weeble, because that's just what I got used to. And trying to if you're a Weeble charter, trying to chart on Think or Swim is insanely frustrating. I just I can't do it. And then tra uh, trading view. So trading view for like my swing charting when it's off hours, I'm looking for swing charts, this and that. I'm 100% trading view when I'm live trading and I'm day trading. It's Weeble 100%. And for Phil's trade, uh, thinker swims what I have a bulk of my money on, and also Robinhood and Weeble. Um, and I've got some of Fidelity. I've got some all over, but those are the main ones for me as far as the platforms. If you haven't chosen a platform to really chart with i would do think or swim it's got better it's better than weevil it's just once you get used to weevil and and trading view it's hard to transition to think or swim because of the way the slide screens and open screens and and move everything around is opposite and it make you like insane unless you really sit down yeah, and use it, it for a opposite. while yeah my first what three weeks on trading view i kept sliding the wrong way um i also struggled when that happened on browsers on computers yeah it would be down instead of up for like a year i was like it's like when you the year turns over and you're writing the wrong year for a month things <laughs> like that but yeah so i think i think trading view is by far the most intuitive yeah. charting platform 100 you know you make a fat arrow you make a curved line and trend lines and i think i could sit my mom down and probably have her charting on it in 15 minutes because it's just so intuitive tos is not intuitive it's what I learned on though. I'm really glad I learned yeah. on TOS because it made trading view seem so simple. Um, it's just like learning a car on manual transmission and going to automatic. It was like, holy crap, I don't have to do anything here. So I really thought that trading view was, and here's the biggest thing that made me go to trading view. The biggest, biggest, biggest thing. On thinkorswim, if I'm gonna share a chart with somebody, I, I it's one URL, one link per chart. On trading view, I can, unless there's, if there's a way to do this on TOS, I don't know what it is. Okay. But on trading view, I can share one link with you and you have all of my charts, all of them. 
right now I have like 95 charts and like it says 2000 drawings because there's just, I have all kinds of, right? And for, for Thinkorswim, I mean, how long would that take you? And you have to import it. It would seriously take 45 seconds to a minute each one if you're fast. It would, it would, it's, it's not um, practical on yeah. swim. So the sharing piece of uh, trading view is very easy. And I also, um, the public indicators. Yeah. The community view. scripts are uh, amazing on, on, on trading that, view. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. And we have, we have just so much on there at my levels. I still want Amy to get her swing. I'm more, I've like, got it almost done. I've, I do everybody okay. that's part of the discord. Right. I've got a trading view. <laughs> I'm setting up with all my fibs and the stuff I use with about 20 tickers. Not quite as many, Yeah, but I am working on no, that. No, no, you're good. I am working on that. It doesn't, but I don't want it to be, I want it to be, if you're looking at five swings, those are the five tickers that are on that layout because you can make a new layout with all of yours. Yeah. But anyway, we'll talk about okay. that. So, um, yeah, you don't need a million screens, guys. You just need your screens. You know, no. it can be your laptop and your phone. No problem. No I problem. use three. I have, um, and when I'm live trading specifically, I have one I'm sharing with you guys, one with broker on half of it, Discord on half. And then one was split in four and I'll have a couple of the other ones we're watching. And then I try to always have ESRN Q, one of the two, just to kind of follow market conditions. But, but honestly, if I wasn't live trading, I would only need the two because I would split each in half and four is plenty for me. I don't, I don't need much more than that. Um, but because of live trading three is what I need personally, because I want to, I want to be able to see the discord and the chats and, you know, and have my, one of my um, platforms up for buying and selling. So for me, it's two. And then the third one I'm live trading, I don't use the third one. I'm not live trading. So. Yeah. When you, when you log on and it's Weeble, I'm like, I know I'll see the Weeble mobile twice or not mobile, the p computer w version of Weeble twice a week. So yep. um, I never got on that too much, but Okay, Amy. Um, okay, guys, in the Jumbotron of this space on your phone, um, I think it's the same on the computer, but go click those tweets and just retweet them. So people, there's a way to retweet the room. I think you click the thing on the bottom right. Yeah, click the bottom right uh, talk bubble and then retweet it. I appreciate a couple of you guys that have already retweeted it. Um, okay, so let me pick a question here. So this is my question to Amy, and this is going to be hard, but I, I said there's a thousand tickers, there's more than a thousand tickers, but how do you pick the one that you play? Because Amy will say Veil, um, Race, R-A-C-E, and I'm like thinking to myself, how does she find those? So that's my question. Ah, uh, that's a good question. I have been building a watch list for a couple of years. I keep, and like, when for discord exclusive you're gonna get my watch list soon like i don't share the whole watch list ever i give little bits like the anti-spy stocks that i was talking about with you guys and i've posted like 20 out of 50 so far this and that but really it's been a, a comp compilation the last three or four years of stocks i love the option movement on of stocks I've gotten used to the charts on of stocks that have enough because here's the thing I could find a fantastic setup on a chart but the options have no volume and it's simply not a chart that we would we would trade options on so it doesn't make my cut a lot of just the regular um the regular Dow has a lot of stocks that are 300 400 500 dollars stocks that have zero option volume so it's it's a but are you clicking through your watch list like let me check this one manually. Are you no, manually looking at your list? What I'm looking for is okay. I first thing when I turn on my computer in the morning, okay? I've got two things. First of all, it's the alarms I have set on Thinkorswim. When I'm going through my charts and I'm charting it, I am setting alarms for certain things. Like it moves below $60 and back above $60. It triggers my alarm. And in the morning, first okay. thing I look at is everything I've triggered. And that's that's my gotcha. swing setups. And it could be 100 stocks. I'm not looking through those 100 stocks every day. Right now on my main watch, right. I have two, four, six, eight. I have like 26. Tesla coin, Rivian, okay. Amazon, SoFi Run, CCL, Disney, Zoom, Pan W. Yeah. You guys Snapchat, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And then those will start to cycle out as they get to levels. I don't have NVIDIA on my short list because I'm not looking to right. swing trade NVIDIA at all time highs. And it's definitely not ready to be shorted. So that doesn't even come up on my list to look at in the morning. I'm not looking at NVIDIA in the morning. I'm not looking at uh a, a, you know, any of those stocks that are just overblown. But I, I'll tell you what, Apple and Tesla are now on my everyday watch list because they're getting to levels <laughs> where I'm looking twice at them for sure. You know, so you have about 30 tickers yep. that you are constantly cycling through and 30 is not a lot. You can do that in an hour. Yeah. I mean, if, once you get good at charting and looking at them and you guys see I rapid fire through. Let's look at Microsoft, look at the video, like within 10 seconds, sometimes I, I look at three tickers because it's like Amy's saying, if there's no setup there, you just move on to the next thing in your watch list. Yeah. And I did think like, dude, how how is she finding this bullshit? Veil, whatever. <laughs> but she will she will circle back to Veil. And so I've gotten to know her watch list. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's another, you know, Amajama special. I might we're not mention at, it for three months. You know, and then all of a sudden we're back exactly. on it again. Absolutely. And that, you know, it comes from many different places. There's been just, just the, the analysts I've worked at with in the, in, in the past, uh, stuff I see on X. I kind of pride myself on going away from the same five stickers, tickers you guys see on X every single day of the week. Because I like, you know, it's a little bit of that is ego, of course, you know, those type of things. But I want to find the best setups because like I tell you guys, we're never trading just to trade, which we want to trade the best setups. Some of these I'm watching for like four or five days, four or five weeks before you get that swing entry, because I'm waiting for that right list of criteria to make that play. And for everybody else listening, who's looking to, to do the same, start with 10, 10 stocks that on you go look at your historical PL that you've been green on historically. Oh, the ones that you've been super deep on, if you've got 10 tickers you've traded on Weeble this year and eight of them are red, put those at the bottom of the list. Find some new ones. Find the tickers that you seem to do the best with. You like the charts the best with this. It starts small and expand from there. Anyone trying to scroll through, I mean, I don't suggest new traders be, be messing with, um, you know, scanners and stuff like that, where you're jumping right. blind into a chart you've never heard of before. And just like, cause you don't know, some of these charts yeah. have an RSI of 80 where it's getting oversold and going to pull back and other ones, it could be 95 RSI. Like don't pull up just cold yeah. onto charts with screeners. I never suggest that. Yeah. I don't like automatic screeners because um, just like you're saying, you build your list and you know, the tickers a little bit. Um, you know, you have five tickers, then it moves as you get more proficient with trading. Now you have 12 and I doubt Amy started with 30 or 25, you know, build that list. My list I look at every day for day trading is probably like 12 tickers. Yeah. You know, it's all the same ones, Meta, Amazon, Tesla. But um, you know, their personalities the because mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like, okay, Apple, when it, when Apple has a reversal, it's going to be much milder than te when Tesla has a reversal because you've stared at them so long. You know which charts are going to, you got to get in a little bit quicker because when it does have the reversal, it's going to pop. And the other ones that might kind of yeah. lag a little bit, like the, the more you try to, to digest as far as different charts, the weaker you're going to be on those charts. Hone in on your, on your little list and really work at those. And if you're part of the Discord, you see the ones KT and I are kind of looking at a lot. Pick a chunk of those because you're going to get a lot of positive reinforcement from us constantly talking about them well and being like, yep, that's what Amy saw too, or that's what KT saw too. I'm giving you guys free time in the Discord that reposted the tweet. Um, oh boy. I'll just pick a few or, or all of them. I don't know. Um, Pete, Yoko. Overkill. All right, I'm gonna go. Couple I'm gonna. Weeks. I'm gonna. And so. while you do that, next question. I'm gonna. I'm gonna read this one out. When cool. you are entering lottos for reversals, what are the biggest things you're looking for? Okay, this Oof. is a little bit of secret sauce here. I love. I have a short watch list that is totally after earnings plays. After the earnings are done, and we see big moves on it. Those are like my bread and butter, like snap that we just nailed, waiting for it to establish that bottom, especially when it's an overreaction. Snap had horror. I know KT hates Snap the dog, but K Snap had horrible financials, <laughs> but their growth is yeah. good. 
I know the, the area where Snap was going to kind of start to settle and then start bouncing. Same thing we did with Zoom coming in there and it popped, it pulled back and then it had that second leg up. So I would say right away, right away with those entering lottos for reversals, look, I like to go first to just after earnings like that, that, that at least three to five days out, more like two weeks out because the volume and the volatility is there too, because we're coming out of earnings. Like if you look at, um, just any of these charts, really, you can see clearly with just the volume, like after Snap had earnings, we could see how that volume really came in, you know, that kind of stuff. Robinhood after after earnings, the volume never went back down. Those are the stocks that, you know, we really love. Robinhood was another one. We just nailed it coming out of earnings. So that's my answer. Yeah. Short and sweet. Perfect. Um, okay. So. This question is leaps and swings. Um, some people say over a month is a leap. I, I'm never going to correct somebody if they're like, I have a leap for two weeks out. I'm just going to be like, okay, six months, whatever you consider a leap. Yeah, there's over you six can do months. A year. For I was me, yeah, anything over six months is a leap yeah. for me. So, so if Amy is saying leap. I'm looking at a leap for Roku. She's talking about six yep. months. Just wait until the contract that she says comes out um and then you'll see what she means by by leap you know a lot of this stuff in trading is very subjective and um made up terms right and there's no dsm like there is for psychology where it it says this is what it is there's no board that comes together and decides so um yeah it's per trader and uh I think Amy's video was awesome how she was going over, hey, a lot of you swing traders, I'm buying six weeks out. You know you're going to sell in the first pop. Maybe you only buy three yeah. weeks out. So you have some some safety on the theta, but you're going to get a better pop on the percentage versus Amy is more like I'm trading all these tickers. So take some trims. Maybe if she makes 800 bucks. She adds 800 bucks back in on the dips. She's managing it. She has six weeks to manage it. If you're more of a three weeks is a long time trader. Yeah. Um, you get out on the first pop, look for, wait for her next swing. If she's like, hey, I'm adding uh, on the dip here. I'm still holding. You're like, oh, I'll get back in. Right. Yeah. So you have to merge your style and your risk tolerance and your account goals with what your mentors are providing. and. Um, you know, I can't go up there, you know, Tiger Woods hits a ball 350 yards and then he hands me the golf club and says, now you do it. Yeah. Well, no. Right. So we use the same tools as everybody, but that doesn't mean we can all carry it out and execute it exactly the same. Watch her trades, watch her swings. What do people say, Amy? They're like, I'm going to jump into her next swing after like four hits. Exactly. And then uh. that'll be the one that loses. And one thing I suggest, and I did talk about that for anyone that hasn't watched it, I'm going to pop the link on just in a couple minutes of the videos KT is referring to. It's about being super honest with who you are as a trader and understanding yourself. That's the biggest thing. Literally, you have to master in trading is yourself. It's not technicals. It's you. And like what I say with that is if you're constantly that fear-based trader that's selling at the first pop over and over, like, you know, and going sure, yes. And then the next step of that is going to be to maybe hold one contract a little longer and try to expand it a little bit and try not to sell, you know, like that growth aspect too, which we'll talk about next. That's gonna be the next video in that in that series. That's gonna be a series because it really people were able to resonate with it really well. So, but for me personally, yeah. a long swing. Is something I consider I'm looking for a weekly open and close before confirmation. If I'm talking about weekly candle closes, it's a long swing. If I'm talking about on, on my setups, because all these swings, you guys see, I put the trade ID out first. If I'm talking daily open and closes, that's something I'm probably planning on holding two to four weeks, maybe six weeks. If I'm talking about four hour open and close, that's stuff I'm planning on holding maybe a week. You know, like that's how I segmented is the length 
of time needs to correlate the candle open and close. It doesn't make sense for me to want a four hour open and close for an overnight swing trade. We're looking at a 15 minute then. So it, it, there's like a chart, there's a, there's a correlation with it. Right. Um, okay, what was I gonna say? Amy swing trading. Okay. KT, what are you looking for in day trades to identify uh, early momentum? Yeah. So there's, let me answer the reversal thing first. Okay. I, so, so we have our, our um, support levels, right? Support levels is just where price, price pauses. It pauses on the way up. It pauses on the way down. And if it rejects a level like NVIDIA yesterday, that rejected a level and dove like $125 per share. I'm going to mark that as a level on the way up. And the next time NVIDIA comes up to that spot, I'm seeing how price reacts. If it rejects, we might dive another $100 again. If it goes over, we might have cleared it and we might jump 100 bucks. So that's now a key level. So I'm looking for those major levels and how price reacts at those levels. If, like I said, NVIDIA gets up to that same spot and I make it bold on my um, on my chart. So now I'm looking for a reversal, especially if it's a rising wedge or another bearish type of pattern. I'm like already adding. I'm like, dude, here we go. Rising wedge. <laughs> I have two contracts. Let's see. Yeah. And then if it goes, I already have the two contracts, right? So once I add a few more, I have a cushion, da, da, da. Um, but I show you guys all the time falling wedge into support. There's not one green candle in sight, but we have a, one of my blue lines that I uh, post as a support catch. And it's like, look, at we just bounced up. And I will circle them and say, we just bounce up and down ping pong in between these blue lines. So that's how I do the reversal. Um, one of these guys, uh, E-Trades, e he has gotten amazing at channel trading okay. where he watches it one two right and then the next time it's down at that level he's in calls next time it's up puts and he's like i just made four grand on amd and i'm like what the hell it hasn't done anything he's like look in out in out he's doing calls up puts down he's a channel trader right that's not exactly what i do but at the same time once you draw your trend line you can anticipate it and if it breaks you're out and you go and you switch your bias um so what did you ask amy before i I asked you um, when, uh, what do you, let me find it. I accidentally scrolled. It said, when you are entering, no, that's not it. I'm sorry. I lost it now. Hold on. All right. If somebody It's knows. a day trading one. I'll find it right now. Uh, what happened to How it? Can you manage your, the effects of theta oh, on day trading? KT, what um, are you looking for in day trades to identify early momentum? Oh. Okay, so two things. Number one, the tightest range on, on after hours in pre-market, right? The tightest, tightest range. If Tesla has only moved like a dollar overnight within the smallest range, I think that the global markets, which are open all night long, have not taken Tesla out of that range. So the global market has an inside bar. Inside bars usually mean the previous trend will continue. It doesn't always, but it usually is coiling, right? So a lot of traders say, oh my gosh, uh, Meta gapped up $3, right? Or let's say 3%, something crazy. Meta gapped up 3%, so I'm looking long. And I'm like, it just, everybody that's in Meta is going to sell. You're going to be their exit liquidity. Yep. Now, do things, will do what we call gap and go? Absolutely. Um, I like to mark those pre-market levels, especially somewhere it sat for two hours in the morning while we were all asleep. That's a new level. It's not just pre-market low and high, but the two things I look for are the tightest pre-market where the move hasn't happened yet, and I'm going to catch the move, or I do play those gaps like, hey, we have a lot of momentum overnight on, on Apple, whatever. I re really don't day trade Apple because it's just so slow. The float is insane. Um, so bad example, but any any stock it could be Roku, right? The tightest pre market on Roku. I'm like, dude, we haven't moved at all on that. Perfect. Um, meaning, I'm going to catch the move. So 
that that's something that Bueller taught me. He said we have a tight pre market, right? If we have an inside bar one day and then overnight and in the morning we have almost no movement, that's like crazy coiling. Um, if it's on its way up, bullish, and if the ticker's on its way down, bearish. So I I really don't understand when people are like, I'm watching uh <laughs> these three tickers. They've all moved up, you know, two percent overnight. I'm like. Okay, you know, maybe they bank and that's their style. But for me personally, I feel like I'm already chasing. So it needs a pullback first. Up, yeah, like it doesn't yeah. mean it won't be for bullish. Me be it means that for the most part, dip rips and rip dips coming out of the open. If something's bullish overnight, and this is, I get exactly what he's saying. If so, I tell you guys this when I'm live trading. If something's bullish overnight, it's up two, two and a half, three percent. I tell you guys, I really want to see this pullback first. Sometimes it doesn't happen. It could be a short pitback. It could be five, ten minutes, and then it starts to rip over that opening print, and boom, there's our entry. But I get what KT says. Right. It's super, super high risk to 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 the gap and go. Gap and go is the highest risk you're going to do. I I agree a hundred percent with that. Yeah. So, you know, for a gap and go. Yes, I'm telling you, totally, sometimes we gap up 20 bucks, and from open, it keeps on going because everyone and their mom wants in it open. Yes, I miss those trades. I am never in those trades. What I want is um, we find gap up, but we're then we fade into opening price, and yes. then we get in. I will always get in on that, like, pullback I, on uh, – yeah. On that, I will never be like, oh my God, Zuckerberg did something and Meta um gapped up. So yeah. we're definitely I like something I will almost never ever do, almost never, is say I'm going long or short on something before market. And opens. we know KT always almost says when never. every pullback's a gift, that's what he's referring to. When he yeah. says that. So exactly. Yeah. So I used to when I talk about it says how many screens and what's your pre-market prep. My pre-market prep used to be overnight and I was doing like which of these big liquidity tickers that we trade all the time have the tightest pre-market and that's my watch list for the day, okay? Yeah. Because a lot of them have big overnight range and then a lot of them have a tight pre-market. So I'm watching the tight pre-market because that overnight range that just occurred on those other tickers, I'm going to catch it after opening bell, yeah. okay? That's how I used to do it. I still think that that's very valuable, but now I only wake up about... 30 minutes before open to look at that before I was like, I'm going to find this needle in a haystack. I need an hour. I need 90 minutes. I was never sleeping. I would trade, you yeah. know, the first 90 minutes and then I would need a nap like crazy. So I just don't do that. And I consider my pre-market prep to be the first 30 minutes of the market, sometimes 45 minutes. Um, I've been starting my streams at 6 50 AM or 7 AM on purpose because I want people to wait. Um, I told Amy the other day when we were having some tech issues, she called me and she's like, I'm trying to get this to work. And I was like, Amy, I want it to take 20 minutes because whatever bear flag or pattern we're going to catch right here, it's going to take three five-minute candles. That's 15 minutes. Three five-minute candles. That's one 15-minute candle. That's freaking nothing. And I just told you guys I'm on the 15-minute chart all the time. So three 15-minute candles, that's 45 minutes. So Put things in perspective with the time here. You know, I need an hour just for a setup. You know, four 15-minute candles is what I need for my best trades usually. And um, the bigger the time frame, the heavier you can go, right? If you want me to think you're a fucking joke, tell me that there's a bear flag on the one minute. You know what I mean? It's just like meaningless. Yeah. Um, so... And and okay. that's where different strokes for different folks. I like to find the outliers. I want to find the stocks within my group that have the highest pre-market push or the highest pre-market sell-off because I do believe the second legs of those are going to be very clean. But those are the stocks I'm absolutely waiting at market open for that first move. And then I'm playing the secondary move. Whereas, and I get it, yeah. that the ones that are super tight pre-market is the ones you would kind of look at for that first move of the day. And then those outliers, the ones that are 4% up or 4% down, I'm looking at those for the second move of the day because that's where the volume is going to be. So a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay. 
let me pick the next question. I'll find something that's it says trading. Uh, I'm looking for something. Is success in trading truly mental and not technical? Ooh. Yes. Yes. It's one. It's one hundred and fifty percent mental. Um, trading is all all mental. Um, it's. I I refer to baseball all the time as the biggest analogy for trading because I can say it's a pitch down the middle, it's eighty miles per hour, and put the bat in your hand. You have to know when to swing. Period. Yeah. And nobody and I can't say I can't stand there and say okay swing because it's too late. You know, <laughs> so it it takes so much screen time. It's unbelievable. And when you guys are like, I've been trading for a year. How come I'm not profitable? That's I'm thinking to myself, okay, if if I said here's this guitar or piano, right, any instrument, and I say, in one year I want you to be doing shows. I want you to be the level where people are going to come to your recital because like of how good you are or whatever, right? You're profitable as a musician. Could you do that in one year? Probably not. And I tell you, I'll tell you right now, I don't know any instruments, but I can guarantee you that trading is a hundred times more difficult than learning an instrument. I learned um, Spanish at, uh, as an adult. And I was like, this is so hard, you know, like I'll get this, whatever. If Learning a language is 100 times easier than trading. Trading is, it's so much harder. It's insane. So it's all mental. You have to be, um, when, when I was going to say earlier, when I started teaching, I, I didn't drink alcohol very much. I just never really cared for the taste of like beer and stuff. Um, this is, I mean, this is 2010 and, uh, I was like, I'm going to try to, to have a glass of wine or a beer, you know, to, cause my the first year teaching was so, so difficult. Um, and, uh, I was like, I can't drink, dude. Like, I'm failing as a drinker, as a, not an, as a, <laughs> I can't do this. I can't have my one beer a night. And so I got into yoga and yoga changed everything for me. I would go to work and, and all day I was like, this freaking sucks so bad. And um, I would like, I just got to get to to 3.30 in my mind for yoga. And I would get to yoga and everything would go away. It was peace. I was unplugged. It was amazing. And the biggest factor in yoga is, is this, you only go as hard in yoga so you can do yoga the next day because they say you need it every day. It fills your soul every day. So if you go too hard in yoga and you're, they're like, okay, get into a handstand and you hold it for too long, you know, for a five minute handstand, you're not gonna be able to do a handstand tomorrow because your shoulders are just too sore from the day before. It's the same as trading. If you have a ten thousand dollar account, once you hit five thousand of that money, you should probably just think, "I'm I may be going too hard here. Um, I should back off. I'm use your whole account. That's fine. You'll have the money the next day. I'm not saying don't, but you should not be going balls to the wall trading every day. We're not built for that as humans. And like Bueller, I think it's Bueller that said it. We are as humans only built the most mentally. Uh, Focus people with high mental fitness to make two to three emotional decisions per day. Yep. I remember he was saying that for like six months. And if you're if you have high capital in a trade, it, it is going to become an emotional decision um, if you're a human being. And so when people are taking this trader that just joined a few days ago, uh, Amy, the one that um, didn't get your affiliate, and I had to yes, like, apply I know it to you. About. Yep. So. So he sent me his, he's like, dude, yesterday was amazing. Look at my trades. And then today was a little bit rough. And I was like, oh yeah, send me your trades from yesterday. Let me look at kind of what you did well, you know, versus today. And it, it was like nine, it was like nine or 10 different tickers. They were all green, but it was like Adobe and freaking JD, right? It's just random tickers. And I'm thinking to myself, the every ticker went up yesterday. Every single one. You could have traded any stock that wasn't a leveraged short stock yeah. and done okay. And he tried to like catch them all. And I'm like, if that's happening, you just need to find the strongest ones or the sector that's strongest or do spy cues. Yep. But you shouldn't be making more. Three to four trades a day is like 
kind of match. Yeah, especially like you should be able if to it's count all your different trades on one hand. Especially if it's you should all be different. able to count your daily trades on one hand. To me, because you want to go heavier. Why are you going to make eighty dollars a trade doing ten trades when you can make eight hundred dollars a trade doing five or three? Ideally, two. You guys see me in there. If I put out a trade that goes sixty percent, I'm like I'm done for the day, guys. Yeah. Unless I find something. What sixty percent in a day? What else do you need? You know, I mean, you put in ten grand. That's isn't that six grand right there? Sixty percent. Fifty percent is five, right? So, yeah, it's like what? It, so mentally, it's not about a dollar goal. Please do not have dollar goals. I need to make a hundred dollars. Yes. A do not do that. Do not do that. Um. Do not have. Um, you know, my dog needs surgery. I'm going to trade and raise the money. Do not do that. You will lose the money and then your dog will need surgery and you won't have money. Yeah. It's going to be double whammy. So, um, put that, put that idea to sleep. Am I right? Like dogs? No, <laughs> nobody. Oh go, you, somebody was like, my dad needs a new radiator. We don't have the money. Do you think if I learn options, I'm like, no, no. That's when you're going to the lose the most. Cannot... Yeah, the pressure's going right. to the pressure's going to kill you. And exactly what you said about that daily, because all you're doing when you put a daily expectation on yourself trading is a, you're going to force trades because you didn't hit your daily limit, or b, if you don't hit your daily limit, you're setting yourself up the next day to be more impulsive than you need to be. I understand that, like if I want to make three percent a month or five percent a month or this or that, where it's this larger time frame goal where it's not on your shoulders where day in and day out there's a specific expectation of what you need to make because there is some days the charts are absolute trash and we shouldn't trade it. And and absolutely it it is mental because and I've talked about that scale before. On the left is your your fear based trading. On the right is greed based trading. And it, you know your personality. If your life is chaotic, exactly. if your life is chaotic, and you're an impulsive type of person that like you know whatever it might be, you've just got your ducks aren't in a row. Mm -hmm. You know you're more yeah. than likely going to struggle with trading as well. Not that everybody needs to be mm -hmm. mentally sound. I'm I'm effing crazy. I'm talking about like impulse and and, and emotional stuff. Like you know, emotionally Dude. and who you are and your strengths and weaknesses. The first step I tell every single person I ever meet with, do one on ones with anything else. I say. What in your personality do you believe will make you a better trader? And what in your personality right. do you believe will make you a worse trader? How is you, how Amy, are you, I, yourself as a person, your character going to negatively impact your trading and to keep that up front and be hyper aware of that? Because if, if we're I not, it, it's done. It's done. If we're an impulsive person, we shouldn't day trade. And not that you shouldn't day trade. Yeah. If you're an impulsive person, you shouldn't day trade all day long and be taking five to 10 trades a day. It should be one and done, two or yes. done, three and done max. Your biggest your biggest goal should be less trades, yep. for sure. Yep. Um, Especially if that's your personality. Amy, I wish we had 100 people in, in, we have like 50 in Discord. I don't know how many are listening here. I wish this was in person. And I'd say, I need a volunteer. And the people whose arms shot up, I would say, you FOMO and you FOMO. Yep. Like what? What do you? The people that are like, I'm not going to raise my hand. I don't even know what I don't even know what he needs a volunteer for. Like they're already starting to think it over. They they probably aren't fomoing. You can't just jump into trades and that feeling of I'm missing the move. I'm missing the trade. We miss trades every day. I'm like we're in Meta. Wow, we should have taken Amazon. That looks like the play of the day. You know, we're gonna miss it. You are going to miss it. You have to accept and know that you either. Try to catch every move or be okay with blowing your account. Period. Yeah. Period. Um, somebody just said, uh, I love what they're saying. Yesterday I was up $8,500. I told myself I can get to 10K, so I didn't sell. Ended the day down $3,000. Woo! Vulnerable thing to say. I respect you. Um, if you are trying to get that goal, at least break even if you mess up, you know, like set, set your stops above even. But um, another, another big thing from Bueller who I'm going to reference a million times, cause I didn't even know what options were when I went to Bueller. It's like my whole foundation. 
he said, don't OCD yourself into 100% gains on something. It shoots up. My goodness, you got 70%. Crazy. You know, if it's at 67%, we're all like, I want 70, of course. You know, our OCD, our, we're all round numbers just comfort us. And he was like, sell at 92, sell at 89, sell at 94. It's about to be 100%. Don't let your OCD cost you money, you know, in, in trying to get that 100%. So I will sell at 98 and 94. And I feel, I feel like I caught 500% because I'm like, I owned the trade. I didn't let this you know, get to, and like, it gets to a hundred percent. And I'm like, oh, I missed it. Fine. But I didn't miss it because I won the psychological battle there of not having to wait for that 100% or 10K or 1K. You know how many days I had? 998 bucks, $960, um, 420, 480. I want the $500 day, Yep. but I would much rather do my yoga thing, right? Be able to trade tomorrow by not trying to get that round number, that sexy number, and just being like, I'm out, I'm moving on to the next trade. Um, and please watch Amy's video on finding your edge because that is taking your personality and it is injecting it into you as a trader. And if if Amy or me or you know some of these one minute chart traders, if that doesn't work for you, so it's like this guy got rich off the one minute chart. Good for him. I know personally I couldn't do that. I would get faked out on that. Um, that's just not what I do. And you're like, wow, I'm used to the four hour. Cool, stick with the four hour, but take the concepts over. And you need to find what you need to make your hybrid, your mosaic um, from everything that we're saying. And Amy really lays it out in a way that I probably couldn't and saying, this is what we're saying. This is where you're at. And this is how you find yourself in the middle and execute the trade. And we have some very successful traders that are doing really well. And any of them that are posting gains or posting a recap and you think to yourself, holy shit, I could not post a recap like that. I couldn't chart like that. That's very impressive. DM them or at them in the chat and, and say, hey, what are you doing to get to that level? Because I have traders that have been with us three years that have never posted a chart have never posted a trade recap. I don't know what the hell they're doing. You know, I hope they're profitable, but it's like, I don't know where they're at. I would never be like, hey, can you give a class on charting Apple? Because I don't even know if they can do it. You know? All right. You want to find a question, Amy? Oh, Amy's muted. Okay. Um, on that topic, Sorry. Don't, don't let don't let your uh, green trades go red. I'd rather you break even or if right as it's approaching break even, freaking get out. If it's a small loss, I tried to get out um, break even one day and it was like a $28 loss because of slippage. So it happens, but don't let it go red, please. Um, anytime you're up a certain amount, let's call it $1,000. And your gains are now half that, 500, you should be cutting or or unless you still haven't added in or something. But don't let your profits half. As soon as they half, get out. It should never get close to red. So I know I can sit here and say that and it's easy to say. And in the moment, it's it's insane and it's difficult and the pressure's on. But you're going to feel like a balloon popping. You're going to feel that freedom um, of remaining in the driver's seat of your trade. And the way you stay in the driver's seat of your trade is by scaling in and scaling out. If you are getting into Amy's swing, she says, oh, we're taking hood calls. This is what I'm taking. You're like, cool. I said I was going to put five grand into Amy's next swing. Put in 2,500. Put in 2,000. You could do 1,000. If it goes, oh my God, 300% overnight and you only had in the 1,000. Guess what? You just made three grand. Um, and if it drops the next day and the thesis for the trade is still there, you're adding in the rest of the um, rest of your amount. And you're still in the driver's seat of that trade. I strongly, strongly encourage, unless you're scalping, to not go full position. The only reason you would do it on 
scalping is because, or you're anticipating a short-term trade, right? Within like 30 minutes is that, um, you know, you want the most capital you put in a thousand dollars because you want to get 10%. You know, I just want a hundred per I've done, I've done 10 grand on a three minute trade. I got my 10%. Um, it feels like nothing, but I'm like, yep. all right, that's a thousand bucks, you know? Um, but leave room. You don't need Amy to say, hey, guys, I'm adding SoFi calls. Don't go all in. Just add half of your position. And then the next time I update it, or if it dips, add the other half. You don't need her to say all that. You just need to know how to do it, okay? You want to have proactive traders that know how to trade. And she can't say, for your personality, this is what you do because she's broadcasting it to 300 people. So maybe you're the type of trader that goes all in. And when her swing goes, um, you are out that day. She did the Palo Alto swing on a Friday. And she was like, all right, we're taking March, April calls, whatever it was. And I was like, I love this chart. I'm going to take some zero days. And I got out at like 50%. And guess what I did? I took that money and I put it into the Palo Alto swing. It was like free money. And I was like, Amy, your swing set up for six weeks out? She's like, yeah. I was like, I just did it on a zero day or on a weekly, <laughs> yep. right? You don't have to do her contracts. It's just a suggestion. She always says it's um, not financial advice. It's what we're doing. Do it on your paper trading account. Write it on your yellow legal pad, whatever you want to do. But you don't have to take her exact contracts and her exact week. That's what she's doing. The best feeling that I get is this. I say, all right, guys, um, I'm getting into spy calls, one DTE. It's not really moving here. I think it's coiling, blah, blah, blah. It pops. I'm like, cool. This just happened like two weeks ago. I was like, I'm out for 26%. I'm happy with it. I probably won't swing. It's one day. And then members were like, I just got 80% on a zero day. I was like, good for you. That, that wasn't that wasn't my plan. I didn't have the, you know, whatever you want to call it, balls to do that. Um, I don't know if they went, were red 40%. I have no idea, but I'm happy for them. And uh, maybe they took zero days and my play. It does not have to be exactly what we do. We're saying make banana bread and you can make it however you want. You can add more sugar if you exactly. want. Exactly. Absolutely. All right, Amy, you're back. Yeah, I don't know did, did what happened. Set? Sorry about that. I am back though, yes. Um, we skipped one. I want to kind of answer this really quick. Yeah. Um, it said it's the first question on the list. I would appreciate you doing a deeper dive into how you identify and calculate risk reward of a play. Watch that video. Um, I can go into a deeper dive, but that's really what it comes down to is any trade, whether it's a day trade, swing trade, short swing, leap, whatever it is. I, I, you have to identify your target range and your stop loss range quickly in the trade. Because that's the only thing that's going to set you up to be successful long term. Because if we constantly come into a trade blind and don't understand, we have a major SR level at $10. We took the trade at $9.50. It's a day trade. $10 is going to be a major, major resistance range. So that $0.50 cents is 5% at that point. Split it in two, make two reasonable, and then always make sure that stop loss is less than that reasonable target one range. And if you can't do those two things, you need to dive into the education first. Because if you're not able to look at a chart and identify a reasonable stop loss range and a reasonable take profit range, which is kind of like a horizontal charting 101 or not able to read the blue lines, KT supplies, those type of things and have a stop loss and a target based off that, then I strongly suggest pumping the brakes a little bit, maybe only doing uh, very short trades or following along with the live trading for a little bit first and really diving into some of the education available because that that it's truly that if I have a 10, if I'm entering a play at $10 and I see a resistance at 1050, my, t my, my stop loss is going to be 950 to $10 in that range. There's just no way my stop loss range can be deeper down than my take profit range, because then I'm automatically setting myself up to have to win 60, 70, 80, 90% of my trades just to break even. Whereas if that stop loss is always smaller than the first take profit, we could win 50% of our trades or less and be a profitable trader. And that right there 
is, and the reason I talk about this so much is it is the only proven method for me that will hedge against the impulsive natures of us being human beings. When we have that set system in place, that rigid, hardcore set system in place, that's the only way for me specifically that I can bet against myself and all that stuff in FOMO, greed, fear, impulsivity, all those things, having hardcore ranges I have to stick by and playing the same amount of money every trade, Those, that's my thing to curtail against humanity because the machines the algos are all designed to expose those things they they know and there's certain levels where it's that's exactly the max pain level where the reverse is going to be and that's why so many of the big institutional brains say when everybody else is selling and stopping out that's when you should be buying and that's why the computers are designed to exploit that so how can i trade as parallel as possible to those computers I'm sorry, it's there's no simple answer there, but that's it. Stop loss less than target. That's it. That simple. Awesome. Absolutely. I like when I said with the 98%, how many times we've seen a reversal off of my blue line that never touched? And you're going to bag hold if you wait for the line. Dodge just said here, this is perfect. Uh, price levels and target o- OCD. Yeah, let's call it target OCD. That's yes. a good way to put it. Um, I don't have to wait for your exact dollar price target support level or fib level to hit on a trade before you close the position. Um, you can sell or start to manage it as it gets close to it. Right, exactly. 100%. And here's the thing. If if I'm in, um, if I'm looking at a price target for calls and we, it's a, it's a ticker that's 99 something and it's going to hit 100 psych level. And I'm like, probably going to pull back at 100, right? So what you can do is this, you sell it when it's close to 100, not at it, because everyone and their mother are watching the same level, okay? And if you really, really, really want to be into something and you just made a thousand bucks, throw a hundred dollars in to the put side, because what are we saying here? We're saying it's probably going to reject 100 and you want to catch up to 99.99, right? We're all we all have greed and all want to do that. As you make your first scale out, buy a put. Why not? Either your last two contracts are going to go 100, 300% because we blow through that psych level, that level we're watching, and your puts aren't going to matter. I just said you threw 100 bucks in. It's it's who gives a shit. Or we get the fat rejection and that put just like yesterday in Nvidia is going to do way more than your calls did. If you're watching a profit level, others might be watching it. It's probably a take profit level or a fib for a reason. And uh, get into the other side of the trade. Now, you have to consider it a lotto before it rejects, right? When I say lotto, I mean it hasn't confirmed um, to the upside or downside. And we'll get into, Amy, I, I don't want to forget, what do you consider a confirmation? Yeah. But before that, um, there was a couple of these I wanted to look at. If 80, uh, 80% of options expire worthless, the other 20% are in money B, uh, honey B. Yeah. Uh, over time, should we look to add other strategies, building a long-term portfolio, writing calls, selling puts? Yes, absolutely. That is the next like level. Um, that is the next option strategy besides just single vertical options. Um, instead of just buying or sell, or yeah, instead of just buying or calls or puts, you start to build and once you have 100 shares of apple or whatever you can write a covered uh option on that you can do uh what's it called covered what's cs cash secured puts um, covered calls cash secured, secured puts. puts yeah cash secured puts um you if you get assigned like i was telling amy she wanted she like was like i love sofi i love sofi and i said well it's not a very expensive stock. So if you do the cash secured put and you get a yep, sign, no now you're assigned in a stock that you think is going to go higher. You know, that's, so that's something I'm going to build out. We've got, I've got the video up now for debit spreads, which is like step one, but in the future in honeycomb, uh, the, the future videos I'm doing once a month are going to be 
uh, credit spreads, and then it's going to be cash secured puts and covered calls and each of these strategies, because I do talk about this a lot, you know, um, the other strategies is the most important part. I tell people, you guys watched, I posted it on the thing yesterday, 25K withdrawal, because that always needs to go into possible. I don't care if I'm the best day trader on the planet. All it takes is one day of weird, bad news and overexposure, and we could blow our accounts immediately. I am constantly yeah. cycling the money out of the day trading account into swing trades and passive uh, income strategies because really the, the, the goal is to have so much money, you don't have to day trade anymore. All you're doing is passive income. All you're doing is that I'm good with that 20% a year on my $2 million and making 400K a year on it. Like literally 20% on $2 million is 400K. Like that's the type of things that really is the ultimate goal is to not have to day trade. And if you do, doing it with such small amounts, it's fun. I day trade with under 5% of portfolio because that's what you should do. Day trading is so damn risky. Zero DTs are so damn risky trading Tesla and NVIDIA up here. Like you guys told you, NVIDIA is not even on my watch list. You know, I love day trading. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm also, I'm also done at a certain point each day. And I am dedicating the rest of my day to looking at swing trade setups, looking at right. what the cash secure puts are paying out, what this is paying out, what that's paying out. And another thing, and it's another question, I'm not sure what, but we'll skip it when we get to this hedging. Like, what do you do if earnings are coming up? If, I, if I'm if i in SoFi and I've got 500 shares of SoFi, I've got these leaps on SoFi, all this bullish positioning on SoFi, I'll buy a short-term put against my position at, at, at certain levels, at, at, a, at $10, which is going to be a tough level to break through. But I'm not willing mm -hmm. to sell my calls like Robin Hood, perfect example. All right. I've got those calls for 2026. We're up 60% on those. I don't want to close that. I've only got one buy in. So if we continue to hit our head at the 60, that 1660 level I've been talking about over and over and over again, I'll buy a short term debt. I'll buy a short term put on it. Put a hundred bucks. I've already made so much profit. Take part of that profit. Like KT Ted in the short term, take part of that profit, get a put, hedge it, hedge your position. And then I'm good. Either way, I'm okay. I'm circumventing the loss on the leap with the short-term put. So, you know, and that's another question is how do you deal with those levels when you start to hit levels of resistance, this and that, and not close the trade? That's how you don't. Or you go far enough out and you start to learn to have a little bit of patience with your swing trading, which I understand takes time. It's, it's a process, guys. It takes a very long mm -hmm. time to get to that level. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm <laughs> went to one of the members works nearby this car dealership um where I bought my car and he was like he joined ever since and he do, he's been doing real well but I was like dude you you were in a Tesla today, right? He's like, "Yeah, I wasn't even paying attention, brushing my teeth." And he's like, "I blindly bought it." And I'm like, "I'm up 300% and brushing my teeth." And I was like, "You're such a bastard, you know." um that that worked he's like i didn't charter and he's like I'll, I'll tell you flat out i didn't look at the chart i was just like this guy's been hitting tesla puts all week um but 99 percent of it isn't that 99 percent of it is you have to put in the work you have to know the charts you have to know the personality um nvidia was just up 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 right well people that decided yesterday i'm gonna get in got completely smoked on nvidia longs um because it had that huge drop the the it pulled an smci is what it did um with like that big drop but okay one other question i was looking for here we go it says ed enter in trades whoever this brian guy is has like the best questions entering trades waiting on confirmations when to use a break of a price level a candle body close a fib retreatment waiting for confirmation can be tough number one Confirmation is different for everybody. That's number one. Number two, um, on the 15-minute chart, I am looking for candle bodies above or below my level. Now, on any one candle, in my opinion, if the wick is bigger than the body, it's, quote, more important, and same with the candle body. So if we have a long wick candle, we're like, okay, there's a bottom wick here. It's turning into an inverted hammer, whatever that might be. But if we have more of a big candle body and Marabozu K 
candle or something like that, where it's a, it's a very short tail or wick on the candle, then the body is saying buyers are stronger there, okay? So if we get candle bodies above, above these levels, to me, that's huge because I have been, was it two weeks ago? I had Amazon and then Tesla. I got wicked out and I was like, we're getting Amazon puts here. And right when we got it, it turned into a hammer and it was a loss. And and I know people diamond held and eventually they were like, I'm still holding Amazon. I'm green, you know, but for me, it was a loss and Tesla as well. And I, I went back to my blue line and I was like, I thought, because what happens is you get a candle that wicks up comes down, starts a new candle, and now you get candle body engulfing the previous wick. The new candle body is engulfing the previous candle wick, which is like bullish right on the way up. Well, this turned into a tweezer top, and now I had, it looked like two tadpoles swimming south. Um, And I was like, shit, it's a loss, you know? And I, I was like, dude, I can't remember the last time I had two losses in a row. It was horrible. But, uh, it, and then when I went back on the chart, I was like, guys, look at the 15-minute chart. This is where I messed up. We never had that 15-minute close above. And here's the thing about fibs and levels and all this stuff. You do not want it to get to break your fib or your level by one penny. Yep. Like, oh, and Amy's like, it never broke that level. And then you zoom into the one-minute chart or something, and you're like, it broke, Amy. Yeah, it did. But... Dude, I will fucking block yeah. your ass. Like it is not about one penny. It is about is it a candle body confirmation? Is it clear? If you're gonna cross the damn street, yep. and it's if you're not your sure, you it love, hasn't been confirmation be yet. Fair. If you're not sure yeah. if it's confirmation, it's not. For me, exactly. for me, it's a push above the level, test, a retest, and then the next push. So I want like on a fibs, I want and I, I so I talk about those candles being being magnets towards the level. I don't want that candle touching the level anymore. I want that first candle that has demagnetized itself from that level. If we're waiting for a high a day break and we have that candle pop of that high a day break, that's not enough for me. I want that candle pop, the body to close above it, next candle to open above it. Then we take it. And what's great about that is we can redo that four times only win once and still be green. Because if we lose that support and we have that same candle open and close below that level, sell. You can rebuy next candle. And if you're and if your reasoning for not wanting to sell, if it breaks down and loses that support level, is I don't have any buy power left, you shouldn't be trading anyway. That should never be mm -hmm. the reason you don't sell a position mm -hmm. at the loss of structure. Loss of structure is loss of structure. Unless you have a very clear structure below it where you are able to double into the position, whatever it is that is part of your training plan, that loss of structure is loss of structure. If it's only a 5% loss, great. Intel yesterday, I sold it like 3% loss because it was negative catalyst loss of structure. I'm out. People DM me saying, I held yeah. Intel, what should I do? Down 50%. Oh and I told God. them I was out at 3% down. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm talking about. I'll tell about. you guys right now, if you, if, if you DM me, hey, I'm still in, uh, what should I do? Something that I said on voice and alerted with text, get out, you know, rejected, we're out. And you, you text me, an hour later, I'm still in. I'm down fifty percent. I'm gonna screenshot it and send it to all my trader friends, and we're all gonna laugh at you. I'll tell you right now. Because or I wasn't what watching the, the position, and I'm still in. If you if you turn oh your back God. on anything less than ten days till expiration, you're playing Russian roulette anyway, and you might as well just go to the casino and put put your money on red or black because you're not trading. You're yeah. gambling. 100 percent. So loss is structure, Donate to a and that's what makes it please because. You kind of cut off for me, Amy. I don't know if Sorry. you cut off for everybody else. What you say? Yeah, it's you're giving your money to some rich dude that already is rich on the, in from the market. You might as well just donate it, please. Uh yeah. If okay, here's something else that you need to write down. If you cash accounts under ten thousand dollars, if you are in a trade, because 
you're out of buying power. And you're not cutting it because you have no more buying power. That is not a reason to be in a trade. <laughs> that is a recipe for having less buying power tomorrow. Yeah. Do not stay in a trade simply because you have no BP or buying power. Do not do that. I promise you it'll reverse on you. And if it doesn't and it goes 500% and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that yeah. worked. That is not a repeatable strategy. So no. um, no. do not hold Taking a that trade take... just because you have no buying power left. You're the one that decided to have no more buying power left. Yeah. And here's the thing, all right? If you if we go back to the to the risk reward that I speak about all the time, and you sold that position at say only an eight percent loss and had no buyer power left, and it popped up and was a hundred percent win, but if it didn't, and you ended up holding down to fifty percent, it's going to take you the next five. It would be like five trades where you sold where you should have. So you have eliminated, you have wiped out yeah. five reasonable losses with one loss and now your win rate for the one that doesn't work out for the three that work out or the four that work out one doesn't boom you're back to even because your 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 risk reward is ass backwards and you've got to win four out of five trades just to break even when you do that and that's your thought process of this one pops back up yeah well if one doesn't pop back up one you have to win your next four trades to make that money back. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Yeah. That that uh, visual chart that shows if you are down 50% on a position, it has to double to get back to break even. It's yep. so huge. And that is what made me get into scaling in and out because I would be in zero days and I'm like, man, this has been flat here. I'm down 50% which is insane and don't do that. But I'm like, it's holding VWAP. It's holding my levels, da, da, da. It shoots up and I either get out at minus 10% and if I'm lucky, break even. But if I scaled in correctly and my next purchase was when I'm down 50% and that's dramatic, you shouldn't hold to 50. It should probably be 20 to 30 on a zero day if you have a drawdown um, tolerance for that. But if you double your position, now you're only at 25%. Yep. And then when it, the 50% uh, down contracts that you would have got out of break even before are now up 25%. Yeah. So scaling in and out is what took me from uh, side hustle money to full-time money, yep. period. And when I don't scale in and out now, I'm like, okay, I made 800 bucks in that trade. I could have made 2,300 if I scaled in correctly. Every single time. correctly is the key word so, though. Scaling in and out isn't just blind buys at the first green candle you see or red candle if you're in if you're in puts. It's about major the next structural support like it holds. If we have that dollar rejection and we have heavy heavy support or a blue line down at nine seventy, understanding I'm gonna make a buy here, and then at nine seventy if it holds, I'm gonna make I'm gonna buy for a I'm gonna put a hundred in here. And then down there, I'm going to put 200 in. But if it loses that, I'm not scaling. That's where I cut it. That's what KT is referring to exactly. with the scaling up and down. It's not scaling random. Yeah. Not random at all. And, um, you know, I'm like, hey, I like to add long when it breaks the second blue line up. If you want my blue lines, I share them all over the place. Okay. So if a stock is dropping and, like, the members are saying, I think it's curling up here. I'm going to go long. I say it needs to take out two blue lines for a structure change for me. Um, because I, I'm not trying to catch the bottom, right? Once it holds that second blue line on the 15 minute chart, now I'm in. Now, if I do a lotto, okay, I'm in whatever, right? On the first blue line, but I want to, I want either my blue line and pre-market low, my blue line and VWAP. It has to be two. My, I respect and value my money too much to get in after one level break, period. And like what Amy said, it should be screaming out to you. Um, if you guys know Rake Trades, he says, if it's not a fuck yes, it's a fuck no. That's his big thing. Yep. So if it's not screaming out to you to take the trade, go. And guess what? It can be doing that and you still don't take the trade. You need to visualize 100 trades and take one every single day. Like, 
you don't need to catch every move, man. And to the point where I was, yeah. I don't even trade the open now. The first 15 minutes, it's rare. I can remember one time in the past year that at 10 minutes before open, I said, I'm getting Tesla puts. I'm like, I don't see how this is um, going to get bullish here. We lost this. We lost this. We lost a major level. Um, I'm probably getting them right at open. And I alerted them at like 632. And somebody was like, oh, I got it immediately at open. I was up 40% two minutes in. Like it, yep. it, it dove, you know, by the time you see it, alert it, da, da, da. It's, and I was like, Tch. I go, wow. Because I, I know a lot of discords will be like, we're getting Boeing puts it open and Apple calls. Crazy. And I'm like, what? Got to see that yeah, price so, action um, in the first couple minutes, in my opinion. I did do it with Apple puts earlier this week, though. I said, I'm watching Apple puts right at open. And within two minutes, we bought them. And like KT said, it was because oh God, all bearish nice. signals were stacked up on top of each other. There's one question yeah. really quick I want to answer. Yeah. Um, what will happen to you guys once yeah. TOS switches over to Schwab? Mine already switched to Schwab. The only difference is everything's exactly the same. But at the bottom where it shows overview, watch list, trades, positions, mine's blue now instead of green. Paper trading's yellow, regular yeah. trading's blue. And then before the switch, it was green. But my regular account that I trade with every day is blue now instead of green. That's the only difference. And the name. So it switches over seamlessly. I just wanted to answer that because it was such a simple question. Yeah, and uh, I've had Schwab for years, so I was like, oh, this will be cool. Um, Schwab and TD are not banks, they're brokerages, so yep. they have a lot of leeway when it comes to, um, it's just it's just better. Um, if yeah. you have, when I went to New York, I was like, there's a TD Ameritrade on every corner. Like, it was like, you could walk into a branch. I didn't even know they had branches. In California, I, I've never seen one. Um, but uh, because Schwab isn't a bank, um, I got them years ago for uh because I was going to Vegas and I didn't want to pull out money for it was like seriously five dollars to pull it out at Caesar's Palace. I was like, I'm not doing that. So I would transfer over my Vegas money and I would just pull it out as I needed it. And it was for oh sorry, free ATM fees. That's the whole point. So worldwide, it doesn't matter what liquor store, what strip club, what casino you're in, it could charge $20. It was free, and it, I believe it still is. So that was nice. really cool. If, if you have money in a checking a checking account with Schwab, even though they're not a bank, it's still called checking, um, I think. Okay, any other? Okay, right here. It says, just started day trading. What size trade do you recommend for someone with a decent size account? My risk appetite is larger, so can I size up? If you recently started trading with a lot of capital, let me tell you right now, you're going to freaking lose it all, okay? Yep. You need to transfer take it out. 2500 bucks. <laughs> yeah, transfer it out and trade with that. And I'll tell you right now, you're going to lose it and you should because options are insane. They're just insane. And you're going to miss time things and you have the capital to pay that market tuition. Um now, once you get on a little roll and you get some nice trades under your sleeve, you could do like my boy E trades here. He transferred over six figures. And I said, he was like, hey, is it time to size up? And I said, take 10K, put it into Aries, right? Or uh, whatever side account, trade with that for a couple of weeks just to ground yourself. Because when you're making 20 grand yeah. a day and then you go for coffee and you're like, that coffee's seven bucks. It feels like nothing. And here you, you need your money perspective grounded. And so he took the 10 grand, I want to say to 15K. I don't remember. I, I don't I don't text him, how much did you make today? You know, like whatever somebody yeah. wants to share with me is fine. But he was just like, that was the best transition to getting back to trading larger sizes was going a week or two with that 10K or do 5K, whatever you want to do, yep. because you're looking for charts. You have to respect your capital. You have to be very selective with your trading. Um, and the other thing that I told another trader this week, God, I'm so amazing, is he put in 3,500. Uh, he's like, hey, I put in 3,500 bucks. I'm at nine grand. I'm so happy. I'm about to get to 10,000. Like, it was all a good call. And I was like, dude, I freaking love it. And I was like, break your OCD right now. 
before it gets to 10k, which everybody wants to see it go from yep. 9,900 to 10. Trust, like I do too. I said, but be in the driver's seat, own this shit. You started with 3,500 two weeks ago. Yeah, he he's been catching all the Tesla puts with us every day, right? And I said, take out 3,500 right now. It's going to go from 9,500 whatever to what 65, 6,000 whatever. And I was like, you know, you can make that money again. And your seed money that you just started with is sitting there ready to go as your safety net. If you completely F up and blow this account, you can start and do it again because you have that 3,500 that you already started with. You just did it, right? Was it luck or not, you know? And so he was just like having the confidence of knowing that I have that money realized in my bank account. As somebody just said right here, the best gain porn is the money you transfer in your bank account. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I still. So he did oh, that and he was like, I just put in $3,500 and two weeks later transferred back $3,500 and I still have six grand to trade with. Are you kidding me? That's in two weeks? Shoot. I said, what are you going to do in three months? So you have to do these little, what, mind games, right, Amy? I mean, we're yeah. kind of making ourselves better by limiting ourselves, use a 10 grand account instead of a hundred thousand. Like just because you have a quarter of a million dollars doesn't mean you need to trade a hundred thousand dollars like in your account. It's yeah. it's it's the riskiest. What is riskier than options trading in the stock market? Nothing, nothing. It's the riskiest trading you can do, yeah. you know? So if you're going to do a safe version of options trading, do the swings. Yeah. And if you really want to do it safe, and Amy says, I'm getting SoFi swings. I'm getting SoFi calls. Was it a $30 stock, $20 stock? Uh, 10 right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what's Snap at? What's Snap at? Snap's at 12. Um, you know, route. There was a stock we just looked at. Oh, Hood. Hood's the one that was like 20 something. Yeah. No, Palantir. I think it's going to hit 30. It's at 26. It's Palantir. So you don't, you don't need to trade her options. If you want to do her swings, she just said it's a $10 stock. You can just buy shares. Yep. No problem. Or buy, tell you what, buy one call, one call, buy one for next week, two weeks out, three weeks out, four weeks out. Watch how they perform just to get used to seeing how options move week to week with theta, et cetera, and have your core position be shares. It's $10 a share, guys. Yeah. If you, I mean, if you can't. If you can't make successful, uh, continuous money um, with 25K in your account, you're not going to be able to do it with 20, with 250K if you can't do it with 2,500. I still, every time I hit a certain level, I still pull money out automatically and start at square one because there's no reason to. The people you're seeing making 100, 150K, 200K uh, on day trading options, A, they're not using their own money. They're using sub money off of X. Uh, the bullshit scammers and B, they can afford to lose it, it or it's paper trading. One of the three. It's not re because if any trader with a one million, two million, three million dollar bankroll, if any trader is exposing themselves to one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars in a swing trade, they're not who you want to be following. And I'm trying to say this without being harsh because there is no effing way that someone is making 150k a day 300k a day 400k a day 10 million dollars a month and charging 40 bucks for a discord on top of it it's not real it's <laughs> not real i don't want to call people out by name but i just saw one other day that if you do the math it means they're making 20 million dollars a month get out of here that's why they can put 150k in a trade is because they're charging for the discord this or that reasonable trading investing means you keep a very small amount in day trading and if you're starting small it's understandable if it's all in day trading you're doing that but if you do have a larger account i just went over this with someone i had a phone call with this week they were at i think it was 250k they went up to like 750k and went down and lost it all and they're under 10k now you know why? Because you start making these deals with yourself because you, you won the money. It's like you hit the lottery. You had a few really great trades. It was a great stretch of the market, whatever it might be. But you never learn how to scale accordingly with the money. You start to overposition because it's it's that, that thing I talked about the first two minutes when I said we're hyper aware of stuff. And it's like 
It's like we have tingles all over body. We're so sensitive to it. And what happens is we come insensitized to it. When you're at a 500K account and you shoot up to that level without really understanding how to work with that level, you start to over commit to each trade. And next thing you know, you're losing $150,000 in a day. And then the next day you say, it's okay because I'm still up 300K. So, but you, then you double down because I used to be at 750,000. That's how the mind works. It's natural for newer traders because anyone with 500, 750K and made it within a few months or even within a year, don't have the long-term structure and discipline in their trading to keep it. That's why I always say, pull it out, pull it out, pull it out, put it into shares, put it in. Even if you don't understand options, complex options, strategies, buy shares of a stock. If you look at the charts and you look at stocks like PayPal or Snap or Robinhood or, you know, Palantir, these stocks have a reasonable risk reward. It makes sense. When the low on hood was like 10 bucks and we're at 16, but holy cow, the next level up is 30. It makes sense to buy a bunch of shares of that and not stare at it every day. It just makes sense. The company's not going anywhere. You know, those type of things. Do that. Don't just keep all that money and continuously increase the size you expose yourself to every day. And step one is if you can't be successful thousand dollar account you will not be successful on a fifty thousand dollar account give it 30 60 i say at least 90 days of consistent green not every day but if you're green at the end of those 90 days then maybe put a little bit more in that's my thought on it yep absolutely love it um all right let's see here you want to pick it out amy let me pick one out here. Uh, I think the biggest takeaways is you have a system for confirmation over a level. And if the confirmation fails, you need to get out. If you say, hey, we just confirmed over $320.48, that's my level. Okay, and now we're at three nineteen eighty, dollars and you get a candle close below, you need to get out because the other side of that trade is now looking better. Um, the thing that pisses me off the freaking most is those examples I just gave you guys on Amazon and Tesla. It's it's so damn humbling to have, <laughs> wow, if I would have just done the opposite, I would be profitable. God, it makes me feel like worthless. If I would have just taken puts there instead of calls, I would be up. Like, you just feel so, I feel so dumb. I'm like, I'm going long here. Shit, the bears saw this and saw that we tweezer topped and now they're banking. I feel so foolish. So those confirmations are absolutely huge. You are not going to nail them, except you're going to miss at least half of the confirmations because you have to be cutting quickly. You have to be cutting super quickly. And this is how I want you to size. I want you to size your trades, assuming you're going to lose it. Doesn't that make you change your sizing? If you assume the trade is going to lose, what? how much are you going to put into this trade? Now, I don't mean that literally. Obviously, you wouldn't take a trade you assume are going to lose. But in your, just hypothetically, for risk management purposes, I'm putting in 10000 to a trade, right? What if this shit reverses and I lose? Damn it. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to do 2500 You know what I mean? Like, you can't size for... No. It has to work. And and when people say here, should somebody size up? I'll tell you no, right now. I, when anybody asks if they should size up, I say no. And I'm like, why do you want to size up? Oh, you know, I took 5,000 to 40K. So I do, nope. I do 10 contracts at a time, this and that. And I'm like, you just got from 10,000 to 40K, 10 contracts at a time. You're going to get to 80K. Yep. Dude, with 10 contracts at a time. But I'll tell you right now, if you start taking 20 contracts at a time, you're going to be back down to the five in no time, like fast, because you're doing something different, okay? I don't know if you guys have driven 100 miles an hour, but 150 miles an hour feels 5,000 times faster. So yep. there, there's no reason to ever size up past like $1,000 trades. 
because the back was 100 percent thousand bucks great especially with zero dts i mean okay if you're a millionaire and you feel like it's reasonable trade 10k this or that whatever it might be to size up like where if you have a few big trades and you grow your count from 20 2500 dollars to 10k like I would immediately take out that 7,500 and start with 2,500 again. And then that's the time because what's happening here is, holy cow, I'm so successful day trading. Imagine if I put that into easier market conditions and better leaps and better swings and stock shares. My God, I know that's a dirty word, but bought some shares on something. You know, like if you're able to consistently make money day trading, Holy crap, the amount of money you're going to be able to make with the least risky stuff and the less risky stuff is is endless. Absolutely. Okay. Um, top three strategies, indicators, uh, which ones are overrated. Okay. I can say this quickly. <laughs> I think Amy can talk for three hours about this, so I'm going to go quickly. Um, okay. I have the nine the 21 and the 200 EMAs on my chart. I also have charts with nothing on them. Very important. Have a chart with just candles and nothing so you can see what's going on without it, right? The best part about dating is going somewhere with a woman and you see her without her makeup on. See what you're getting into, okay? (laughs) I don't hear laughing, Amy. Oh, you're muted. (laughs) Okay. So you have to see a chart cleanly. That's number one. Number two, those EMAs are fluid. I use MAs, uh, moving averages, not, um, I can't, what does E stand for? X. Exponential. Exponential. Thank you. I was reading something. No, they're not exponential. So they're not needed to move quicker, right? They're not as fluid. They're more static. I use MAs for long-term swings, um investment stuff like that like tesla is low right now that was a nice vape hit amy that was beautiful i need to clip that uh, <laughs> so yeah ma ma's move much slower they're just uh standard moving averages the exponential ones move a lot faster because you're doing day trades off of them so once again the nine the 21 and the 200 uh i have an indicator all you have to do is ask me for it and i will reply with it for the 200 EMA and it puts a cloud above and below it. So you can just glance at your computer, at your trading view, and it'll show you um, a green cloud above the 200 and a red cloud below it. So you're like, cool, I can see from across the room, we're above the 200, so I'm leaning long, right? That doesn't mean I don't take calls if we're below it, because we might curl up for sure. But I'm just saying as a line in the sand, it's a really good indicator. It's called 200 EMA. Parabolic star. Um, VWAP is huge. So I have 9 EMA, 21 EMA, 200 EMA, VWAP. And then I have my levels that are macro levels. I go to the daily chart. I get the tops of red candles, the bottoms of greens, the tops of long wicks, the bottoms of um, the tops of long wicks on a red candle, the bottoms of long wicks on a red candle. That's how I get my blue lines. If it's too cluttered and I can't see, I go to the four hour and do the same thing. And then when you know, the 9 EMA is moving over the 200, VWAP, 21. The shortest term EMA is moving up. That's very bullish. And then it's over a blue line that I just got off the daily. Now I'm in calls. Okay. And I say all the time, hey, we're watching the 9 EMA, the 21, and VWAP over the 200. And when those things cross over VWAP, which resets every day, you're long. Okay. That doesn't mean I don't go short like on nvidia yesterday i said i want nvidia short but the contracts are are 800 bucks i don't really want to spend that and they went to like 5000 each okay i didn't play it but you know so my point is sometimes those lines get overextended and they start to spread out and they get super far north of vwap and you start to see separation between the 90 and made the 21 once it appears a little bit more extended that's kind of when you're taking profits and you're looking for reversals when you see those extend. Um, I, RSI, I only use for potential day trades. I don't get into a stock just because it's oversold or under or undersold. 
over 80 on the RSI. It's really 70, but with this market, it's 80. And then it used to be under 30, but it's probably under 40 now. And stocks get really oversold. We've had extremely aggressive sector rotation. And so the sectors that are not being having money inflow, the RSIs are getting like 20, you know, 17. Before it was like very rare to see RSI under 17. So uh, or 20, like, it's just insane. So under 30 is definitely on your radar, but you have to have momentum going up. I will not get into a stock long just because RSI is 20. I need it to get to 30, 40, 50, and I'm going to ride it up from 50 to 80. Do I get in just because of that? No, I need other indicators because NVIDIA, if you go to its RSI, it goes up to majorly oversold, like in the 90s, and then it resets. It goes to like the 70s, but it hasn't moved down. It just went flat. The RSI resets. And then it went back up to 90. So it's been going like 70 or 60 back to 90, 70, 60 back to 90. So the RSI drops when the stock is just flat. So there's not a play there. So RSI can be, but I do like a MACD a lot for those crossovers. And that's it. I'm right. I'm right. Okay, so for me, a uh, couple things. And the first one I'm going to give you is a little bit of day trading secret sauce. I I don't think I've ever shared this anywhere. Uh, one little strategy that I like is um, on mega caps only. Mega caps, the big boys, Tesla and up. You not even like AMD, Tesla, Apple, those. Uh, RSI pop a line at 55 on the RSI. Five minute candle closes above the 55 on the rsi those are your bull entries anything below the 55 not take that bullish trade that's just a little secret here go go back test that on anything you could sound clip this go back test it on apple microsoft the spy the Qs, any of those 55 rsi on the five minute close above it that's your entry for calls um that's just a little sneak thing there but for me it's pretty simple fair value gaps Volume profile, volume, MACD. And the MACD, when I'm using the MACD, I'm not taking that line cross. I'm taking the line cross and the cross of our zero plane. When we get in, a, this is more swing trades. We get that MACD, break it over zero on that zero plane. All right? That's what I like, the crossover and we broke over that zero. So, so for me, it would be volume profile, fair value gaps, and MACD those three and then the rsi check out that trick guys it's 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 a pretty good one though five minute chart only 55 rsi five minute chart mega caps take only those entries and see what happens so um and what do i think is overrated <laughs> oh i use fibonacci retracement sorry guys my number one would be fibs i, I don't know i had a brain part number there. one that's your number one yeah <laughs> and as far as what i think is absolute fugazi garbage wave theory any and all wave theory because all it is 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 making um fibs complicated that's it you don't need it because there's so many different ways where you can change the script that i truly believe wave theory teaching wave theory and using wave theory as your main strategy for trading is a self-fulfilling prophecy i know it all i can teach it all it's and I believe that the people that really lean into it and try to trade with it and share it all the time are just trying to sound more um, advanced than they are in the market. It's a bunch of trash. Come at me, sit in my DMs. I don't care. Uh, harmonics and wave theory is absolute garbage. And I do like a uh, wick off accumulation distribution, and I'll do a class about that. Support and resistance. Uh, um accumulation distribution zone trading as well but fibs um so my top top would be fibs volume profile and um i guess the max no fair value gaps fair value gaps volume profile fibs those are my top three so what how big is ict influence in your trading um, minimal. Speaking Honestly, of fair value gaps. to be honest, it's very, very minimal. My fair value gap exposure um, didn't even necessarily come from ICT. That's definitely where I kind of learned what they dug a little bit deeper into it. I think a lot of uh, I think a lot of the ICT strategy is is trash. Um, I'm not even going to lie. I think a lot of it is trash and uh, it's just simple reading the market the way it is. And, you know, like imbalance, I use imbalance a lot too in trade. I talk to you guys all the time about 
shelves where the order shelves are sitting, this and that, you know, second level. But I tend to use that more in my day trading um, and swing trading volume shelves and, and order and balance is a really, really um, artsy and cool way nowadays to say where a major support or resistance is. Of course, that's where all the volume is. It's, you know, like a lot of this, people try to complicate super simple strategies with big, cool words, because then they could sell a whole lot of memberships to people and be like, wow, you said imbalance, volume, imbalance, and a fair value gap. You must know everything. And I don't care. I'll say that because one thing I will hang my hat on is I teach in a simple, digestible way. And I'm teaching the same exact stuff that has all these really cool catchphrases that everybody wants to talk about, you know, confluence and, and, uh, and imbalance and all those things. And I say it, support resistance, accumulation uh, distribution. It's super simple stuff that the more it could sound complicated to the outside person, the more money they can make selling subs. Sorry, and that you guys know I, I talk about it in the Discord a lot. And sorry to anyone that under uh, it, it, that offends. Um, I could, I could, I could back my walk. So that's all I gotta say <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah. Someone just said thoughts on Trend Spider. I really do like Trend Spider a lot. It's very clean and it's a very soft uh, presentation. Um, it's not very intuitive, but you can do crazy stuff on there um, that you can't do on other platforms. So it has its place for sure. Um, somebody named the lion's share that you're lucky sent something and I can't reply or something like that, but, um, okay. Is there any way you can replay this presentation? Yeah. At the end, uh, if you click the link, you can press play and go to anywhere. I'm also going to screen record it and um, put it onto YouTube. So yeah, lion's share. I cannot see your tweet. Very weird. I think they deleted it. Okay. Uh, I'll keep going if Amy wants to. Okay. Um, I can go for a couple more minutes. Do you feel like the market is yeah. uh, set up to steal money from retail traders? Yes, it is. And that's why I talk all the time about removing the the human element out of it and going strictly with the math of the market and statistics of the market. And I talk about the percent of this breakout, the percent of that breakout and clearing of orders. When we're day trading, I talk about that, that bar, anyone who's in where, oh, we clear out that low. Now we're going to get the impulse. That's why I trade like that is because I'm trying to trade like the computers trade because yes, it's all set up to take our money for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Why are the Lakers garbage this just year? Looking at it. <laughs> they they just beat the Bucks last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. How can Why, I manage did Damian the Damian Lillard come in and shoot that ball? He should have shot it from <laughs> half court and made it. How can I manage the effects of theta on day trading? How can I identify areas for taking profits and cutting losses? Um as far as theta goes, go further out, stop doing zero DTs. And if you do do zero DTEs and we start to trade sideways for a little longer than, than comfortable, cut it and wait for the actual confirmation. And that's really all there is to it. And after 11 o'clock AM, go out to one DTE unless you're doing that last 15 minute uh, boomerang type trade where we're getting in and out. The ones KT is insanely good at, it. amazing. I'm gonna have to start trading power hour with y'all. But that's my suggestion. Go further out <laughs> because the theta is just tick, 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 tick. So there's nothing to do to manage it, really. Yeah, and you guys are down 30%. Like I said, on a zero day, I've been down 50%. And I'm like, man, what's going on with this? Well, I was only going to risk 500 bucks. I'm in 500 bucks on a zero day. It's down 50%. So it's at 250. I can't, um, you know, add more to it. The only time a trade goes when I'm at full position is when I've added in two other times. 90% of my trades, 
make their move without me being in a full position because I've gotten really good at timing the trade. If I time a tr an entry uh, poorly, that means I might be in full position because I mistimed the entry and I got a couple ads in. So you should not be in full position, in my opinion, for, for risky day trading on most of your trades because you had such a good entry, yes. you know? Um, Before we cut this off, see. I do want to make one shameless plug to everybody who's not part of the, the uh, Honeycomb Discord. Um, you can go to KeanuTrades.com or you can go to the link on my bio. Both will bring you to the same area. I strongly suggest you come check out our Discord, even if it's just for a month. I mean, if you're willing to put money into a trade blind without the education you need, be willing to spend that $150 on a sub. And for all of you that hate Discord, uh, there is a WhatsApp option, which is awesome. It's got an exclusive swing trade channel, exclusive day trade channel as well. So if you like what you're hearing, um, this is kind of the anti-Discord Discord kind of group. We're very <laughs> above board. Yeah. You know, run away from those Discords that show you a spreadsheet with a 98% win rate. We show our actual trades every time. Oh, my God. So I just I had to do a shameless plug there because... You know, it's just the reality of the market. So, you know. I love the DMs and stuff that I get that a member said, I've charted your last trades for three weeks. Here they are. Wow. Good job. Da, 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 whatever. And I'm like, they're the ones tracking it and telling me that it's yep. a good rate. Um, you know, when you see people, I made 20 trades in a row, green, and then three of the trades are 4% trades. Yeah. I'm just like, listen. If you are okay with 4%, and listen, I've escaped trades at 4%, 0%, red. I've, I've, we've all done an escape job on, on a trade. But under 20% on an options trade, to me, is not a win. Nope. Have I made money on that? Yes. I've, I've put 10 grand in. It went 10%. I'm out for a thousand bucks. I've totally done that. But if you are okay with getting 7%, you should not be doing options. It doesn't make sense to me. Just just get into Snapchat long. I mean, you know, swing it for a few days when Amy says to get in those swings. Your capital can be better used without theta. I just don't get it. You know, it's too risky for the reward. And the amount of risk and stress on a trade should equal the yeah. potential rewards on a trade. If you're staying up all night on a on a trade and, you know, you're in super deep or whatever and um it has to be worth that it has to be where people are stressed about trades and they they had they're like hey can you look at spy i have two contracts 40 dollars each and i'm like you're you're in this 80 dollars let's like let's have some perspective here yeah. you know there's a there's a clip a jerry seinfeld that i share all the time when members talk about sizing he says you know if you're at the pharmacy you have a headache and it's like maximum strength you want regular or maximum strength and he's like what is maximum strength like what even is that you literally find out what will kill you and then you back it off a tap yeah you know it's pretty funny so it keeps sizing up on your contracts add one add two add three whatever and you see that dollar amount get to 400 800 as soon as you start to feel like holy shit that's too much money back it off you have to back it off until you're in a spot yeah. where you're comfortable or you're not going to be able to manage the trade from uh, an objective standpoint. Absolutely. And if it's a zero DT trade, and I tell you guys this all the time, or a swing trade, but especially zero DT, one DT, and, and someone's counting a win as anything under 20%, that's a loss because literally two, you got in and out in about two candles because you make 20% about two candles on the SPY and then you sold and all your members are left holding the bag because you're selling and then you're telling them you're selling even though and they got in later than you. So they ended up losing. Your 20% win was every single person following your guidance lost. So those kind of things, like I talk about it all the time, like I consider it a loss. I say, you guys hear me say that in the chat all the time. I got 10%, but I consider it a loss or break even. It's a loss though, because, you know, that's just stuff to be hyper aware of. It doesn't matter if KT and I are making money, if no one else is, it doesn't matter. That's why I really try to teach my strategy with stuff as well. So I have to jump though, KT, in about like one minute here. 
So yeah. any final thoughts? Um, no, just, I, I love the group. I strongly consider you guys come check it out. I believe we've, uh, more than adequately proven, you know, a lot of our thoughts on the market and, um, yeah, come check us out. And I did say I was going to give my top pick for 2024. That's not so fi And I'm going to say right now, and you could you could grab this clip. Um, I do believe that if we could close March on the hood, H O D over seventeen dollars the close of March, I believe we hit thirty dollars by the end of Q two. Um, that's my bold prediction, which is about eighty percent on the equity side and the options, of course, insane. Um, it's just, it's festering, it's ready to pop. So that's, that's the one we're hitting a level now that, and everybody in the discord already knows we're already up 50, 60% on 2020 and 2026 <laughs> options. So, yeah. but hood They're is like the one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like 2026. Yeah. Was it 26 or 25? Yeah. 2026. So, that's yeah. okay. I just want to make sure I was not yeah. saying a typo. And we have June 2020. We have June for this year contracts up about 170 percent. We have 2026 up about 80 percent, and then we had our short term as well. But this thing has so many legs to move. And of course, SoFi. I'm just acquiring shares at this point. Once we break 1050 on the weekly chart on SoFi, even a monthly, I want to see a hold of 1050 on a monthly chart that thing's going to be at 20 bucks within three months. We just got to get there and hold it first. So their, their technicals, they're insane. Their growth is insane. So those are my top picks guys. Love it. Love it. All right, guys, reply to the Twitter uh, thing, you know, thank you or a B emoji or something. Um, if you want to check us out? Awesome. If not, like you're not ready, all good. Do some studying. Go to uh, YouTube, type in Keanu Trades, and it'll take you to our channel with endless content, um, especially Amy's last post. It's called Finding Your Edge, and it's um, amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. I've watched it. I've shared it so many times. Um, watch it with captions on. Please watch it more than once. Um, up there, top five YouTubes I've ever seen on trading. It's called Finding Your Edge. And I will add that to this little Twitter feed. Um, yeah, I'll reply with it and stuff. And I share it all the time, so you should see it. Um, all right, love you guys. Bye.